it's recording. So welcome to CBOR uh, working group meeting. Um, yeah, this is Francesca and Jim is my co-chair. Uh, some useful links, the mailing list and the jobber, please join and Etherpad for minute taking. Thank you, Michael, for taking the minutes. And WebEx information, because it's always good to have them somewhere. This is an official ITF meeting, so the note will apply. If you haven't, please take a moment to read and understand. And if you have any question, feel free to ask me or Jim or anybody, um, or anybody around. As a reminder, minutes are taken, this meeting is recorded and the presence is logged. Yes, please go into the etherpad and write your name at the end of the etherpad as a virtual blue sheet. <clears throat> this is our agenda for today. So we are in the introduction part right now. And then we will move over to working group documents where Karsten will talk about the CBORBIS status. And we have a couple more topics in the other part. Um, so we want to talk about the date and time tag document. Um, so I haven't seen Mike in the call. He had asked for time. Um, and uh, so Karsten, I know that yeah, there has been some discussion in the mailing list. We'll continue that here, and if time allows, we'll talk about the, how, the CDDL freezer document or how to continue working on CDDL. Some time for wrap up. Uh, so this is a working group status update. So we've had six interim since ITF 106. So we are pretty used to having uh, virtual interims, and um, we. We, we think they're very useful and we would like to see more participation. So for whoever is here who has never been to a CBOR working group interim before, please do join. They only take one hour, often um, less than that. And we discuss uh, um, topics that pop up in the mailing list and we think, uh, yeah, it's, it's a check. Um, you can find minutes and whenever there were slides, slides for those meetings at this link. And yes, since ITF 106, we've had the uh, CBOR rate tags and CBOR sequence that were published. So congratulations to the working group and the authors for that. And also, <coughs> we've been working on the 7049. Um, so the working group last call ended 23rd of March, there was a couple of issues that were open and we're still um, looking for reviews from implementers. Um, there was some uh, action points from the last interim to read carefully and review the text that was uh, implemented to close issue 164 and 165. And I'm sure Gaston will go more into detail for that. Um, the update of, yeah, the status update of the document. Um, and yes, just uh, scheduling. Uh, we will continue on having these interims on the same time slot, which is this one, Wednesday between 5 and 6 p.m. CST, every two weeks from now until the 14th of July. And if we feel like we don't have topic to discuss, uh, the meeting will be canceled, but otherwise we will be having the meeting. And I didn't uh, uh, ask, but is there any agenda bashing? If not, then we can move to uh, Karsten. Recording uh, my sharing. I wish visible. Here we go. Okay. I 
hope Carson is back. <laughs> Otherwise, I was too quick with the introduction. Here we are. Takes him a long time to get his coffee. No, actually, the, the problem is that uh, the, the Chrome application chooser takes some polynomial time, quadratic or cubic, or I don't know, uh, by the number of applications you have uh, open or by the number of application windows. So it takes me about 20 seconds to actually select an application I want to share. And the fun part is during those 20 seconds, I cannot talk. Um, so that, that's, that was the gap you just experienced. Um, can people hear me at all? Hear you. Yes. Good. Okay. So um, I'm not seeing Mike Jones at this point in time, but he might, might still be uh, joining. Um, so I, I have a, a gap in my slides for, for Mike to uh, chime in. Um, Okay, so um, I want to talk about uh, three things, the, the CR with status, the, the time tag, and if we have time, the CDDL freezer, and I think we will have time. Um, I think the whole meeting will be pretty uh, short. Um, so uh, we, we did a working group last call, and everybody seems to be happy, or everybody seems to be sleeping, or everybody seems to be busy with uh, realigning the world with COVID-19, which is my problem. Uh, right now, because we, we have this little university to run here. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we are getting some comments from implementers. So it, it, uh, it has helped to alert some of them, but this is coming in slowly. Uh, so I think we just have to plan for a little bit more time uh, for, for more comments to come in. And, and one one other comment came in like 20 minutes ago, so um, I think it, it is working. Um, so let me just quickly talk through the three issues we, we have right now on the repository. Uh, so one observation is that the text currently says that uh, not all implementations might uh, do 64-bit integers, but it doesn't warn people that the same might be true about 1 plus 8 so tags to the 64-bit um, uh, tag number. And th that's probably a very small piece of text that needs to be added, by, but I agree uh, this uh, uh, should be added. And why we were discussing this, um, th there also was the observation that uh, we, we are not going to, to get into 1, po 1 plus 8 land uh, very soon because the, the designated expert can control the allocations in 1 plus 2 and 1 plus 4 land. Now, unfortunately, uh, the answer is uh, no uh, to that question because 1 plus 2 and 1 plus 4 are specification required. Uh, so the, the designated expert cannot provide any back pressure there. Interestingly, IANA has, has uh, asked me about allocations in, in those spaces as well, just to make sure that they are doing everything right. But I'm, I'm, I don't have the power of a designated expert uh, there. So I don't have the power to push uh, back. And th that is the result of discussions we have had. And uh, I'm a little bit in the rough on, on those discussions. So of course, I'm clinging to every every opportunity to, to bring this up uh, again. Uh, so do we want to, to put a little bit more control over the one plus two uh, allocations, maybe at least, uh, than we have at the moment? Karsten, is it just says specification required is and first come, first serve? It's first come, first serve. So officially, the designated expert is not in the loop.
Any comments, any opinions on this? I think I may be, may agree with you that I'm not ha not necessarily happy on that. So, then if you would like to have is one plus two uh, under expert review or both of them? Let, let me just um, show the text that is currently in the. Uh, draft. Uh, so 0 to 23 are standards action, 24 to 255 are specification required, and everything else is first come first serve. And I think we should just put the 1 plus 2, which is 256 to 65, 535, uh, to expert review. Um. I kind of remember the dis discussion, but like I know we talked about this. I cannot remember right now uh, uh, how did we decide that those, uh, those would be first come, first served. So I, I think I need to go uh, look at the minutes again. But yeah, personally, chair hat off, I would also. I think it would make sense to have one plus two into expert review. We also could do something like uh, keep the one plus two open uh, to first come first serve, but only part of it. So we, we could say the first half, uh, 4711 is just a syntactic meta variable here. Uh, part of the one plus one plus two uh, would be expert review, and the rest of the one plus two together with the one plus four and one plus eight would be FCFS. So the remaining question is what what is the good value for 4711? If nobody in the meeting has opinion about this, I suggest we I take the action point to look in the minutes and we bring the discussion back to the mailing list and we take a decision really quickly because we don't want to uh, delay this, obviously, but um, we want to give everybody a chance to, to, um, to uh, give their opinion. Yeah, my personal feeling is that yeah, it would make sense to have this in expert review. Um, I'm not sure about half of these expert review, half of the half of these first come first serve because then it. I mean, it's very. Um, um, one has to choose where do you split it, right? <laughs> what is first come first serve and what is expert review? It's very arbitrary. That's the word I was looking for. Yes, but I mean, if you don't know what to do, giving half to one and giving half to the other is kind of the default option. So uh, I could imagine that that's a sensible thing to do. Yeah, that could make everybody happy. But uh, yeah, and let's bring it to the main list unless there is more yes. comments. Uh, Francesca, this is Ira. I just wanted to chime in and say I also strongly prefer that at least part of the one plus two range is expert review otherwise we're not using expert review which doesn't make any sense at all um and i don't uh, i don't care whether it's half or what I, um a goodly amount say several thousand at least ought to be expert review it seems to me okay thank you Okay, and uh, as I said, th there will be a few words added, uh, just pointing out that that people who do not do sixty-four bit integers probably won't do one plus eight tags. Um, issue one seventy-six. Um, 
that's really an implementer consideration, which I never have thought about um, because I don't need it in my implementation. Um, Emil uh, said that maybe we should reserve one tag number for no tag. Um, so in in an implementation where you just have uh, uh, an integer where you write the tag number that applies to something, uh, you can write that uh, you can store this special value, which uh, if we had thought about it in two thousand thirteen might have been zero, uh, but we didn't. Um, so so it probably will be something else uh, like six 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 right now. Um, so w when you uh, hand that uh, up in a data structure, it means this item does not have a tag. Now, Jim uh, noted that actually um, this doesn't quite help an implementation because there also might be multiple tags. So you already have to have a way uh, to, to deal with multiple uh, tags. But I still can imagine implementations where it's just nice to have a tag number where we know that that's never going to be actually used. Hi. So is this to go on the wire or is this something as a convenience for internal implementations? It's implementation. And uh, the, the, the hard part of this is to s probably say what happens when it's on the wire. Because it's not supposed to be on the wire. But so, an attacker might still put it there. So there's no advantage to making it short. No. Um, so that's a good point. Um, and I would say if it shows up on the wire, then it should be uh, silently ignored. Yeah, but we cannot do this retroactively to existing implementations. So there, there will always be some implementations who will uh, treat the presence of this tag differently from the absence of of the uh, tag. And that might be used by an what attacker they, in some weird way. What what would they do with a tag they just didn't recognize then? Well, probably reject the whole thing. Well, that may be appropriate if it if it if it wanders onto the wire then. And that actually also would, would identify very quickly that some, some guy is leaking because they would not, wouldn't interoperate, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not concerned with interoperability. I'm concerned with possible avenues uh, where, where you have multiple entities interpreting the same Seaball, uh, and they come to different conclusions as to what it is, and and th that's the security consideration for a tag like this, I think. So not none of this actually has to go into seventy forty nine bis. Uh, this can be just a tag registration, um, but uh, I th I think we still want to do this right uh, if if we handle this. Uh, issue that has been raised. Uh, what you wrote in the parentheses here can be done outside of slash in parallel to uh, make sense to me. Um, why would we want, I mean, why would we need this in document right now? Well, it, of course, it's more prominent for implementers if, if it's in the document. Uh, so Alexei just argued that it would be better to incorporate the no tag now. But um, yeah, we're not supposed to invent new stuff in in uh, internet standard, and this is not exactly an interoperability problem we are replying to here. So Michael also thinks we should do it now. Yeah, I, I hope the I have three Sorry, I just. Uh, I agree that it should be done now and 
we should put it in 7049 and this and try not to have an interoperability problem that we could clarify and close. Uh, to, to answer Alexei's uh, Jabba question, whether we have to argue about this for six months, uh, I hope not. Uh, but it would be the first thing we actually change in the document that is not just based on interoperability considerations. But I hope we, we can get away with that in the ISG. Maybe our E can give us a hint. If we define this, I would expect that this would be used by some of the people who were, I mean, there was a pre, or somebody wanted a, this is a tag to say that this field is not present. And I'd be willing to bet that the no tag field would be used for that purpose. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, let's let take this to the list, but I, I think the sense I get is it, it's worth uh, spending the effort doing this now. And uh, I mean, we're waiting for new input, for more input anyway, so uh, we we might want uh, to to do this now. Okay, if no no other... Oh, the, the Etherpad writer understood Jim saying something different from what I just heard. So, Jim, do you want to amplify your point? Uh, Jim is the Etherpad writer, so he wrote down what he thought he said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. We have null for that and undefined and so on. I, I don't think that that. Uh, so, Jim, would, would the no tag, would the no tag be followed by a CBOR null? I think that's what the, he was doing, but I'm not positive. That's I, I was never completely clear what he thought he was going to do with that note tag. Um, it was some way that he wanted to deal with this thing is not present. So that tag followed by null would be certainly one way to do it. He just didn't, he didn't want to use null or undefined because that was not quite clear. How would you say that the null is not present? If, if null is an option, how do you say that null is not present? It's the meaning of null that it's not present. I was kind of going into semantics. Okay. Maybe you can write a slightly longer exposition of, of your thoughts to the mailing list. So. I get a better chance at understanding it. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm totally willing to do that. Yeah, and, and one problem, of course, we have is that these are all GitHub issues at the moment. And we have the usual uh, problem of, of co connecting the GitHub issue commenter to any discussion that is going on on the mailing list. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think we know how to do this. We just uh, should not forget doing it. Yeah, this is saying we have this, sorry for being late. Uh, we have this in, in, in other working groups where basically uh, all the uh, notifications go to the lists. It, it can be spammy if there are the meetings and you work at stuff, but again, that might be useful. I don't think we need to do that yet. I think about that, but. Yeah, I, I also prefer being explicit. 
I can bring to the list what what uh, like I mean for editorial issues or things like that. It doesn't spam the mailing list. Good. Yeah, that requires discipline, and you all not always have that. So I don't know. But I think this issue needs to be discussed in the mailing list for sure. Okay. So, so to summarize what I've heard is uh, many people are supporting doing this, the draft, like adding this to the draft right now. Um, but we need to discuss more on uh, how this is used and we bring that to the mailing list. Thank you. So the the issue that came in half an hour ago, or maybe 30, 35 minutes ago, uh, was uh, about the security considerations about hashes. It's well known that an attacker can uh, turn an O1 hash into an ON hash if, if they know how the hash is implemented. And uh, uh, the security considerations currently only mention one mitigation strategy. And of course, it, it should mention that there are other mitigation uh, strategies. Uh, so I think that that's an, a no-brainer to add this to the security considerations. And it's, it's implementation advice. And of course, we can expand implementation advice uh, indefinitely, but maybe pointing to, to the strategy Java uses here is, is a good idea. So that, that's actually all I have on CBOBIS at the moment. So we're very close to be done, I like to say. Um, uh, Kasten, uh, you already mentioned that we've gotten uh, very few comments from Working Group Plus Call. And that we are, uh, are you reaching out to implementers or have you reached out to implementers? Um, I have, and uh, I still can expand uh, that. So uh, I'm, the more I do this, the more spammy <laughs> it, it gets because I'm, I'm uh, engaging more and more venues that, that really aren't quite meant for this, but but uh, where it's probably not too much of an etiquette violation to go ahead and ask for help. Um, but I also think that that some people will will uh, need a week or two to actually react. Um, so uh, I did some of them last weekend. So uh, maybe we should plan a little bit more time. So what, um, but anyway, you needed to submit a new version, correct? Yes. Yes. So what time plan should we have? Do you want to include this also in the new version or editorial comments, etc.? When is our next interim? In two weeks. In two, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe the plan should be to, to submit the next version in 10 days. So we have uh, still time to uh, we can include, read this. Yeah, we can include in that whatever comes out of uh, discussion about the bag as well. Yeah. Submit new version in 10 days and keep. Um, then we wait, then we ask for more reviews from implementers or? Well, we, we can stay in the current state indefinitely. Um, of, of course, right now is not really such a great time to, to ask for people's attention because uh, there are all these other things going on with uh, readjusting your life and all that. 
Um, so um, I, I think it makes sense to to have a little bit more time uh, added. But I also think that maybe by, by the end of the month, uh, we should decide whether we can ship it now. Yeah. So yeah, I started doing the Shepherd review, by the way. So I'm uh, I'm going to wait for the next version to, to finish that. And then we can uh, we can ship it. Uh, you say end of this month. Does that sound good, or any other opinions? Is that too late? Uh, this is saying I don't think that is too late. I think the argument of uh, we are in a prolonged session frame right now, and uh, having the other. Tom oil in the world is a good justification to have this month. I think that is very appropriate. Okay. Also, I, I wanted also to say that considering the few comments we got. Yeah, it, I mean, waiting a week or two more doesn't hurt, but uh, I don't get many more comments anyway. And uh, yeah, and also one thing I noted in the data tracker is that the responsible AD right now is none. <laughs> if I'm not wrong. <laughs> so you are, you are wrong. Yeah, if you go to the about page, Barry is our responsible AD. At the about, yes. By the way, welcome Barry, and thank you for uh, being our responsible AD, and thank you, Alexei, for for all your work. <laughs> nice to be back. Uh, you mean yeah. responsible AD for the document or for the working group? I meant for the document. Oh, I saw that you are for the working group. I'll change that. Okay. Yeah, I assume it was you, but you know, it just doesn't say. Publish yet? That's why there is no responsible idea. Ah, okay, okay, okay. The mysteries of the data tracker. Get it. It sounds good to me. It, uh, it um, the responsible ID gets filled in as soon as an ID touches it. So if you request publication, then it fills it in. Okay. Uh, until then, if I make if I flag it as AD is watching, it'll get filled in. But I don't generally watch the documents until they come to me. So no, that's fine. It's, it's fine. So it according to this discussion, expect to see Seaboard uh, Base coming to you by the end of April, if Excellent. not was wrong. Thank you. So then, comparing to 8152, BIS, how, how much lag do we have? In delay uh, according to milestones. Yeah, I think the, these essentially should be in a cluster. Uh -huh. I don't know that. Well, maybe Jim does. Um, 8152, BIS is going to area directors as soon as the Shepherd report is written. Okay. So we are not that much behind. Maybe half a half a month or so. Great. Okay. Is Mike here? Okay. Seem to be. Well, so I make a impromptu slide, which is a bit empty at the moment. Um, so th th there was a request to have a um, date tag. We have several time tags, but uh, we don't have a way to identify a whole day. You cannot identify a whole day with a time tag because depending on time zone, it may be a different day in different parts of the world. So you really need a, a different uh, uh, tag. So um, we, we now have Mike's tag, which is uh, RFC 3239 based. So it essentially looks uh, like this. And uh, there's also uh, the older idea to do an epoch-based uh, one. And uh, actually, um, 
Was it take number 100? I forget, but it, it's it's a lowercase d. Um, which would uh, have uh, days since uh, the, the Unix birthday. Um, so day, days since 1970 or 101, which is essentially a, an, an offset uh, version of uh, MJD. Um, so uh, one, one could argue whether this should be an MJD, but M MJDs are not exactly well understood by implementers. Uh, so m maybe just doing uh, this offset by 40,000 something so it, it starts at the Unix uh, date doesn't make a big um, uh, difference. So th these are out there. Um, and uh, the, the question really is because these are so fundamental is what, what do we want to do about uh, those? And um, I, I have argued against using a one plus one uh, tag uh, for the, the date time, but this is not really a strong opinion because of course a day number is really short. It, it often will be a two byte uh, number. So the whole thing is pretty uh, compact. So this, this might be a good reason uh, to do that. Um, so, uh, when when we uh, discussed this on the mailing list, there, there briefly was was an idea to merge the two uh, drafts, and then of course the question is, uh, do we uh, maybe have a single tag uh, for both? Uh, we haven't done that with uh, tag zero and one, uh, so we have tag zero for text based times and takes one for, for epoch-based uh, times. So that, that would be a change, uh, but it would be a change we could make. So um, I, I think we should think about this for a short while. Um, and uh, so far, I think the, the tendency on the mailing list was to do the same thing we did uh, with zero and one and, and just have two different uh, uh, tags. So the, the uh, outcome would be to have a one plus one for epoch and uh, uh, one plus two uh, for text based. And that, that would be those two numbers 100 and, and 1004. So, so this is Hank. Um, I am um, absolutely in favor of creating tags for things that are used on a daily basis, so to speak. So uh, I am fine with distinguishing these two via tags because it's just simpler. But I uh, am very confused by the term epoch based, but because if 2020 or five or eight does not have an epoch, what is zero one one so that's probably the epoch of that bay day based counter uh, the start of the common era is probably also an epoch and this is apparently an epoch based day counter um, having said that i am okay with calling it i don't know text based and epoch based although it's probably not right we don't have to give it a name yeah, uh, well, okay, you refer to them like this. So, so uh, okay, you yes, think that's everybody does. Like yeah, so that's what everybody does exactly for 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 common usage and for daily usage. Again, it's okay to reference them somehow, and that's fine. And and as long as this doesn't uh, uh, temper with precision time tags, I'm totally uh, d'accord. Okay, and the, the other things that are related to this are uh, the time of day and the time zone. So Jörg's original proposal, apart from uh, having the, the uh, date, uh, would have a time of day 
uh, tag. Uh, he proposed tag number 116. I'm not sure that is still free. Um, and uh, a time zone uh, tag. So you could essentially take apart an, an RFC 3039 style uh, date time and into three different uh, components. Uh, with the time of day, it's pretty clear what you would do there. Uh, seconds since midnight. Um, and the time zone would probably be an IANA uh, time zone designator. Oh, we just got a message from Mike. On list or in call. Francesca, did you get that mail? Uh, Mike just said he will have an updated date tag draft published this week. Okay. We also agreed on merging uh, yours and Mike's last interim, right? And add your um, as author. Well, so is that the... merging your object, merging yours? Merging uh, your, I, I think I thought that was your document and Mike's document. So my document is, is quite different different okay so that was then Jörg's Jörg's uh, suggestion yeah. yeah okay so that would be the that would be the uh, the update yeah so we, we we don't have to discuss every tag allocation here in the, in the working group but i think this this is uh, important enough for day to day work i think uh, said that that uh, we should get this uh, right. Uh, so essentially, at this point, I would say let's just wait for what what Mike is coming up with. Okay, so I think we we can. Just wait for Mike's new version on, on this one. Um, and uh, then there is this uh, time tag, which has been around for a while, and actually is being used in implementations uh, these days. And, uh, the tag 1001 is being used in uh, implementations. And this was just meant to be a more sophisticated uh, version of tag one. Uh, and, and provide some extensibility, which tag one doesn't uh, have. And uh, one question was whether maybe at some point we want to adopt this so we can handle the whole thing in one go. Um, or what, what is our strategy here? Because I, I can continue working with Hank on this in my spare time and, and eventually complete it because the tags are already registered. Um, but maybe we want to have a common strategy here. So this is Hank, as uh, additional uh, input on this. Um, three, three weeks in average, I received the question, how do I create a timestamp? And I'm sick and tired of explaining the whole thing. And uh, that is this. This is this is good work. I mean, seriously, them people might like um, um, be confused a little bit about it at the very first beginning because uh, we already have these tags, yada yada. But no, um, a timestamp is a global, usable, and 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 interoperable timestamp is not easy. Uh, clocks are bad. They 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 function not very well. They drift. They 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 have a timing timing of some 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 uh, uh, global actions like like I don't know revocation or whatever. Uh, that's a very poor example I know. Um, 
is is important to 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 time well. Otherwise, there are windows, and then things get messy, and and all of this. And we have a lot of uh, uh, timing constraints if we, if we go with the long, very long, 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 long tubes that reach to other planets. Then then suddenly timing becomes very very important. And and so I think this this uh, all this work we aggregated here is very very useful, but not for the everyday use, so to speak. Some people have a very big requirement for this, and a lot of people are just like, well, this is might be overkill, but it is not. Let me assure you. So uh, that's my my additional comment to this. So we we aggregated a lot of um, attributes for time, uh, a representation here, reference points of uh, linear time. And uh, yeah, for example, that. <laughs> and uh, and so I'm, I'm giving back the words to Kabul. Well. Yeah, so these are the things that, that uh, could be added at some point. Uh, there are other things like precision and, and so on um, that, that could be added. Um, so uh, I think this should simply be handled based on on whether people come in and and ask for how do you represent eggs in in uh, uh, CBOR. So people have already been asking about timescales. Uh, they haven't been asking about precision, as far as I know. Um, so uh, yeah, th this this could evolve for a while. Uh, but uh, we could also decide at some point to, to ship it as an RFC. Or we, what we also could do, by the way, is uh, generate a document that combines a number of, of useful tags and describes them so, so we don't get uh, 50 RFCs on, on, on tags, but just a single one that is a little bit like an index of RFCs, uh, of, of uh, tags that go beyond RFC 7. Forty-nine. Um, our AD have any opinion about this? Hmm. <clears throat> Not right now. No. Um. Yeah. Let me review this and think about it. The thing is, I personally would think that, that uh, having multiple RFC is easier rather than one document that is summary of uh, of tags. Um, interesting tags document. Also for expandability, but I don't know what. I, I'm I'm not. Uh, um, I don't have a strong opinion on this either. Yeah, I mean, my general preference is to consolidate things in one place, but there are there are good reasons to split it. So I don't know. I, let me let me review the discussion and. Uh... Also, because like we can we can have an interesting interesting tags right now, but hopefully or likely more tags will be added to it. Yeah, we could just come up with a rhythm. We publish it every five years. And yeah, that's, yeah, a, way, that's a way. Absolutely serious. And in in the time between, it would live as as a BIS document, uh, and and we could register tags against the BIS document. So we don't have to publish this this every six months or so. Um, but uh, having it in, in an editorially stable, useful way without uh, a thousand places where people have to pull some, some descriptions that all differ in the editorial style and so on, uh, that would be a useful service to the community, I think. Yeah. Uh, how many documents will this draft have? How many? Source. Well, who wants to work on this? Um, of course, it would have a ton of contributors. 
all the people who registered something that, that qualifies as interesting. Right. If you're talking about a working group document, it's up to the working group to assign an editor, and that's not necessarily the person who came up with the text. It's just the person who's responsible for keeping the document up to date. Yeah, that is true. So, but but we also we have a, a certain feasibility threshold here. Um, while I uh, am full support of the ideas that are currently in the document, uh, apparently, um, I I would would always wage the uh, uh, additional um, content that would be the biz periods that we are just discussing as an idea. Um, is that is that uh, does that reach a threshold? Does this uh, uh, validate uh, the feasibility of, of having a, having a new tech here? Uh, and, and, and yes, I, I think I would agree with Barry. First of all, not to splinter and, and scatter this around. That makes things very hard to read and actually to find. Maybe you overlook it. That would be like confusing. So very, very on that, that side of point of view. Uh, I think that an aggregate is a good thing. And having that aggregate as a living thing if that is a real, stable, and reliable possibility as this uh, iterative biz that we plan actually to do, I'm absolutely fine with that. If that works, I don't know if that works, but it sounds like a feasible approach that we could explore. Yeah. Uh, point taken, and I agree with you and uh, on everything you said, including if that works. So we have to maybe think a bit, will that work? Otherwise, I agree with you. It's always feasible to plan to do these updates. And then it's also the working groups get busy with other things and don't have the interest in keeping it up, or the working group gets disbanded at some point and there's nobody keeping it up. So it, it, it's never going to be a complete reference, but having one place to go to look for these things and have it updated periodically is a good plan. I mean, it, it's worth it's worth thinking about. So we we have three minutes left. Um, I don't think we have time to talk about CDDL freezer document today, Karsten. Right. Maybe let's move that for the next interim. That's okay. Yes. Yep. Um, Anything more you wanted to quickly add for for this, or we continue the discussion in the main list? So just maybe people could read the the section four of the freezer document before the next meeting, and and so we could have a, an informed discussion what we want to do with this. Noted the section four, the CDL freezer. Um, Yes, then I think we can wrap up here. Uh, so we have a bunch of action item in the minutes. Thank you, Jim, for taking the minutes. Um, and we'll, we will be meeting in two weeks at the same time using the same WebEx. Uh, anything you want to add, Jim? No, I, I'm fine. If there is nothing else, I think we can close the meeting. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.